If you could get seated, please, we're going to begin here. This is the HLB meeting on trees. Is anybody? Welcome to the second meeting of the Dunphy Park master, uh, schematic master plan discussion. As you know, this, uh, this discussion was brought forth by council to hear the public, and that's what we're going to be doing tonight on, uh, on the plans we have so forth. Uh, we'll have a, a direction for that. Right now, I'm opening the meeting uh, of the Parks and Rec Commission and taking attendance. Sila Seleska. Cindy Powers. Joe Burns. <coughs> Absent is Doreen Gennard. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, Doreen is, um, as, as you remember from last week, recused herself as a uh, local adjacent manager of a property. Uh, and it's best if she had recused in it as well. Uh, gets to stay home, lucky girl. So uh, we'll proceed with the three of us, but this meeting is really about you and your input. Um, we'll introduce a facilitator and so forth. Going along the agenda for the evening, um, we have, uh, we'll have comments on Dumphy Park. Right now we're opening the meeting to anyone who has communication on a item other than what's on the agenda, which is the Dumphy Park. Being a public meeting in the Brown Act, we can uh, have this opportunity to bring forth anything other than what's on the agenda. Any comments? Seeing none, we will close public comment and open up our discussion on Dumphy Park. I'm going to introduce Mike, who's going to introduce our first presentation of, for the night, which will be uh, on the plan itself. But Mike Langford, Parks and Rec Director. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Burns, and thank you. All of you commissioners for uh, spending some more time with this very important subject that we have here in Sausalito. Um, we're at a very unique point in time crossing roads for Sausalito here where we have the opportunity to make some, uh, some improvements, some changes that will uh, affect this town going on for the next 20 to 50 years. The last time a park project was done, a major park project was at least 20 years ago, if not longer. Um, so we're building a legacy here, something that's going to last, and it's uh, great to see you, and it's great to see all the people here that are so concerned about that and making it happen. And I just forgot, I'm supposed to put myself on camera there. Hello. And we are being taped today. Uh, we might even be live. But uh, if anybody misses it or wants to go back, uh, the video will be uploaded to the city website in just a few days. It's a few technical things that we have to do to get that done first. Um, but then it will be live. There will also be notes posted. Uh, that brings me to Pam over here, our facilitator. And she and her team are going to be taking copious notes and uh, making sure that we stay on track and, and uh, really helping us get through this, this very important process. So without any uh, ado, I want to introduce Pam here. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> the copious notes will be taken by my colleague, Mia. The not so copious but highlight notes will be taken by my colleague Jerry. So Jerry's going to get kind of the high level things so we get down key elements of what we've been talking about. Mia is going to be taking more detailed notes that will be available to staff, to the commission, to the public, and they'll be categorized by topic so that you can compare last week's meeting, this week's meeting, and what people are saying about those key topics. So uh, I'm a neutral facilitator. Uh, I don't live here, and uh, I don't have a particular opinion about the park. I've been working with you all for the past two years. How many of you were at the public hearing in 2013 over at uh, the Bay Model? OK. And how many of you were here last week at the public meeting? OK, great. This is a wonderful turnout. For a community of 7,000 people, you have very actively interested people. Um, the purpose tonight is for you to provide comment and for the commissioners and the staff to listen. And the comment is on the current status of the Dunphy Park schematic master plan. That just means it's kind of the overall picture of the placement and location of elements in Dunphy Park. So we're talking about where should the bocce ball courts be, not 
um, I like a particular plant and in this color. There are lists of plants that are for consideration, but we're not going to get that detailed. So this is for you to comment on the plan so that the commission, two members of the commission, meeting with Mike Langford, Parks and Rec Recreation Director, will take the comment from tonight, from last week, from emails that you flood Mike's inbox with. And Mike, what's your email address? There's a link to me on the website, dumpypark.org, or you can go straight to uh, my city email, mlangford at ci.sausalito.ca.us. And that's a mouthful, but it is all up on the city website. Okay, you got that, Jerry? M. Langford. Okay. Okay, Jerry, we'll put that up. And so if, for instance, you have to leave before the meeting's over and you think of something you want to tell Mike, you can email him. There's also a website, um, and uh, you know the, the commissioners are available both tonight and at other times. But this is a focused time um, for everyone to hear what everyone else is saying as well. So it's meant to be inclusive. Uh, it's meant to get input that is going to help decision making. The decision making goes from the two commissioners and Mike kind of mulling over what they're hearing, the Parks and Rec Commission voting on a recommendation to take to the City Council on whether and how, with what elements of the plan to proceed, and then it has to go through uh, a process of hiring um, a designer to get more specific, because this is broader. The designer gets more specific, brings it back to the city for review and approval, Eventually, when it time, comes time for money, the city council has to approve that. So this is not the only time there will be the opportunity for input, but this is a great time for the community to come together. So that's the process tonight. How we're going to get there is we have between now and 8.30 for your comments. We're going to do it a little differently than we did last week. Last week, you know, we had the speaker cards. I called up people. They went to the podium because we are recording this. Um, and they used their three minutes to give very focused, concise comments. This time, we're going to try something new. What we're going to do is take the key topics that have come up from last meeting and in the forum two years ago. Those topics are parking, congestion, location of the bocce ball courts, and number of bocce ball courts, and then the lump of other things. So what that means is instead of calling you in order of the you're handing me your speaker card, I'm going to open it up and say, those of you who would like to speak on the parking issues, come up to the microphone. We'll do the three minutes. Then we're going to go on to congestion. Then we're going to go on to bocce ball and then to other. If you are sitting there and you realize, you know, an hour into this, I actually did have a comment about parking, then we're going to go through and, you know, you can, uh, you can use the floor in your three minutes at that time. Ground rules. We want everyone to have the opportunity to speak. Last person gets the same opportunity as the first person. That's why we have a time limit. And if there's extra time after the questions, um, we'll let you come back up. And if you have some additional things to say, we'll do that. Jerry is going to be taking notes of questions that you have. And Mia will have those also. And at the end, staff will answer those, most likely staff. And if there are parking lot issues that are important but not really related to the Dunphy Park schematic master plan, we're going to put it in the parking lot and say, these deserve attention, probably not t tonight. So that's the process we're going to go through. Ground rules for, but that's the process. The ground rules for behavior, um, I have found Sausalito to be a very respectful community. And that's what we're trying to encourage, is that people feel safe to come up and talk and express their opinions. And they feel safe when they have the floor 
when people aren't shouting, when people aren't interrupting. So I'm going to ask you to, uh, to follow common uh, courtesy behavioral uh, measures. And I think we'll have a great meeting and you'll be out of here, uh, <coughs> excuse me, by 8.30. So um, we're going to begin the process with an overview of where things are with Dunphy Park uh, since the last two years. And that will be with a presentation by Jacques Ullman, Friends of Dunphy Park. Um, and Jacques is going to lay out the groundwork and then we're going to open it up for your comments. So, everyone got what the plan is? Okay, great, thank you. Jacques? Uh, good evening, Jacques Goldman, Friends of Dunphy Park. Um, <clears throat> this uh, um, PowerPoint has been presented about five times, I think twice before the City Council. This is the third time before Parks and Rec. We've also shown it individually to people and groups so I'm going to go very fast. I apologize for those of you for which it's the first time, but um, I think I, I just can't bore people too many times. Uh, so uh, this shows you where the park is. It's so critical because it's right in the middle of the residential area. It's a very special area, and that's why we felt so important to uh, develop a plan. Uh, it's important to understand the neighboring properties, and uh, I would particularly draw attention to the Galilee Harbor property, which is in the dark blue, and you'll notice that the green, which is the Dunphy Park, the, or the, sorry, the uh, property owned by the city, uh, there's a <coughs> sort of an indentation on the northern property line because Galilee owns uh, a rectangle there that is within the parking lot and uh, uh, there is a kind of a symbiotic relationship there that the city needs access through that land to get to the parking and Galilee needs to use some of city land because the this piece of strip is so narrow that you can't actually back out of a parking slip without backing out onto public property so therefore there was an arrangement made and there are X number of parking spaces that are specifically allotted to, um, to Galilee Harbor, although they have a parking lot of their own on their own property with about 45 cars, and I think they're a population of about 38 slips, which is kind of 38 units, if you wish. Um, I just want to emphasize that this. Uh, that a schematic master plan is a guideline, and as Pam explained pretty well, it doesn't go into details, but it does set in, uh, in place guidelines which will, uh, well, at first we thought this was going to have to be done incrementally. Now that we, with Proposition F, a good deal will be done all at once, so, so much the better. Um, so the desired improvements and activities and priorities will be defined along with preferred locations, technical requirements, and governmental limitations. Uh, the program for Dunphy Park um, master, Schematic Master Plan is based on a great deal of public input. We had a forum. We, uh, we sent out a questionnaire. There was a website that people could uh, make comments and send to. Uh, so. And, and the uh, forum was uh, facilitated by our same facilitator and was uh, an opportunity that was very well attended. And we uh, then had compiled all of this input and then we presented it to the city council. So there is a well-documented um, uh, public out outreach program that is behind this plan and it was the, the, the basic program upon which the plan was developed. So this is the plan, and I'll quickly take you through the various parts of it. Um, the, uh, something that, that was very particular here is that they, from the outreach program, it was, uh, it was clear that there's a very broad spectrum of activities here and, and people who use the park. And, and uh, all the way from the active bocce ball to, to uh, habitat and uh, wildlife preservation. So uh, this was quite a challenge to, uh, 
to do a plan that would somehow work for, for all of these uh, different activities without their conflicting. And obviously, it meant setting certain priorities. And uh, there are kind of six zones uh, uh, to the plan uh, that go from the north where the parking is and the active uh, functions, such as bocce and uh, volleyball and the toilet facilities, and then a multi-use area, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but goes from uh, large public events to uh, family events, uh, group events, and individual events. So it's an active area if you wish, but it's, it's an active area that's not organized uh, groups, but uh, more of a free-flowing situation. And then it, uh, to the south, we go to a passive area, which is meant to be a habitat restoration and wildlife preserve. And then there are the water activities. And I want to point out that um, in the last uh, forum, there was a lot of talk about the water activities and the orientation of the, of the cruising club and uh, Cass Marine um, <coughs> and uh, uh, concerns about whether or not there should be boat traffic across the, the eelgrass area and so on. And th the plan that we're looking at now is predominantly the plan that will be executed with the $1.8 million from Proposition F and which is the land side. The, the, the water uh, activities are identified here and it, it, it opens the, uh, the way for a dialogue, a further dialogue that has to be take place between people who really know what they're talking about. People who, uh, who are experts in wildlife preservation and eelgrass, people who know about boats, who know about the kind of activity that can take place here. But this is a guideline to start that dialogue. But I think that this evening uh, we should concentrate on the land portion of this. So parking uh, is a, a, a big issue. I do want to say that I uh, respect the format of this evening's discussion, but you have to appreciate that a plan like this is trying to combine so many things together that an alteration of one part, of it, it starts a snowballing and alters all sorts of other parts. So you have to be very careful when you make a consideration about one part, how it will affect the others. And that's the, that was the difficulty and, and, and we hope the, the, the success of this plan is to make these things balance uh, one function and the other. So th this, uh, <coughs> this parking uh, area has 70 spaces with the required ADA parking. Uh, and we, um, we eliminated the parking along the waterfront and we tried to minimize the parking along the old railroad right of way along Bridge Way and uh, to eliminate the need for toilets and, uh, at pedestrian entrances. So you can see that the parking stretches a little less than halfway along Bridge Way, but, the, but it's the area to the north where the active uh, um, functions take place so that we can liberate the multi-use area and bring the park across the railroad driveway, extend the, the, the rolling contours which are a, 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 a major characteristic of the park. We're trying to enhance that feeling and I'll explain more about that later. But So um, we realize that, the, uh, that some people want more parking than this and uh, and we, we, we've thought about that. And one thing that we did do is we recommended that when the city makes an arrangement with the owners of Sausalito um, uh, Bridgeway Marina uh, about parking on the streets, some of that parking in the plan that we saw was public parking. And we recommend that that parking be concentrated on Humboldt Street at the northern end of the park so that maybe 10 or more parking spaces could actually be designated for public parking related to the park. So that there w was a comment about wanting uh, parking and toilets uh, a little 
closer to the north end of the park, this would provide that. And if people are going to picnic in the passive area, they can park on this end. So that's the, the one thing that we were able to develop to mitigate some of the concerns from the last hearing. So the active uses are in the northern end of the park. Um, I want to make very clear here, there were comments made that, that the bocce courts uh, in their present location would not have a view similar to the one that uh, that they have now. The fact is that if you stand in the bocce court, the proposed bocce court location, it, it's in the sand where the where the volleyball court is, and there's a an extensive view between the uh, the gazebo and and the cruising club. Uh, you now views are not always straight down the hill. In our own house, we have a fabulous view across the street here, looking actually toward Oakland. So there is a beautiful view that way, whether the cruising club is shifted or not. So we've gone over this, everybody knows, and there's some contention over the, the, the active facilities here. Um, and to go through this fast, I won't, I won't get into detail because you're all familiar with it. Um, I do want to emphasize, uh, some people didn't seem to understand this concept of having uh, the, the park bermed and, and the value of, of having some variation in the contours. There was also a comment that worrying that maybe that would block views. Well, no, I mean, they, it's not, we're not creating hills, we're just creating low mounds that give you a place to sit and this section kind of gives you a feeling of that and it gives you the feeling of the relationship to the the bocce and the volleyball to the to the walk into the parking and uh, and then there'll be this one that actually uh, gives you a sense of uh, between the bocce and the shoreline and the water and the gazebo so it's Again, I, I spent more time last time, so I'm not going to go too much into the details. Now, this is this is the heart of the plan. This multi-use bowl, which has been the characteristic element of Dumphy Park, where all the, the events that we've all loved, whether they be Easter or Fourth of July, chili cook-off, and so on. And now we're, we're bringing that to the, to the sidewalk and extending the contours over the railroad right-of-way so because the railroad right-of-way has really cut the, the visual communication from the, from the community. And uh, <coughs> I also want to mention that it's interesting that the Galilee Harbor is a, a neighbor and, and part of the community. I live on Litho Street and I figured out that the distance from my house to the gazebo is about the same distance as from the furthest slip on Galilee Harbor to the gazebo. So it is a community at large, and, uh, and, it's, and so we all as a community share many of the same problems. We're equally impacted by the, by the parking, and we accommodate it, uh, but we're on the other side of Bridgeway, and so this gives <laughs> a large number of members of the community more of an opportunity to flow into the park and if there's need for some amount of uh, hedging, there can be at, at, the, at the sidewalk where there's a five-foot um, area where the, where the tree planting is. So the large events and the individual events and so on, I'm going to go fast again because we've covered all this before. Um, the beach area I is improved and it's handicapped accessible and uh, we've raised the level of the of the gazebo and the walkway uh, to accommodate um, uh, sea level rise as a, a result of global warming. The steps sort of make a transition between the hard surface and the beach and a place to sit on. The shoreline path, we, we connect to the shoreline path on, on both ends and uh, this path is, is uh, is extremely important to to connect all of these various activities together and in fact it would it, we believe that uh, 
if the bocce is going on, uh, on, there may be members of the people who are doing bocce who are not participating in the bocce and would like to wander around and maybe enjoy other parts of the park. Vice versa, people in the other parts of the park might be intrigued with what's going on at bocce. So there's the, the, the shoreline path kind of links all this together. Uh, now, <coughs> there's a lot of talk about the, the, the bicycle and pedestrian paths. Now, there, there are two such paths, if you will. There's the existing one and there's a proposed one. So we felt that it was important to clearly identify the existing one and how we operate with the existing one. And so in, in the orange is the joint bicycle and pedestrian path. In the red is the, the bicycle lane for the faster bicycles that's actually in the street. Now that's outside of the park and we can't, we're not, pretend, uh, we're not suggesting that that be altered. We don't want the budget for the park to be used to redo all the sidewalks. But we do suggest that there be an identification of the cross walks at Litho B and Napa Street with a change in the material, the paving material, to at least identify to the bicyclists that it, they're going to interface with cross pedestrian traffic and to slow down. We need to make this work for now because we have no idea when this will occur, which is, which would be a, a wonderful thing to have the, uh, what the people mostly refer to as the north-south pathway, but officially I think it is the gate, the uh, ferry terminal to gate six road path, which is only a feasibility study at this time. Uh, but as far as we can tell, looking at the section in the indication on the right hand side, um, that there's enough, that this, this can take place outside of the park, or if there's some minor accommodation that needs to be made our uh, public works director will see to it that we make those accommodations. But this is a study. It has not been approved, so therefore it, we can't specifically draw it on here because it's not a specific thing. But we do show it here. And every one of these slides is part of the plan, part, is part of the schematic master plan. So it is, it is officially documented that this study exists and that we need to pay attention to it. So, um, as I said, the, the eelgrass and water traffic issues uh, probably are not uh, something we want to concentrate on too much uh, tonight, uh, but just to be aware of where the eelgrass is according to the, or is, has the most potential to be according to the Merkel report, and that when uh, committees get together to design in greater detail the water activities. Uh, this is here to remind people to take this into account. Now we're, we are recommending that, that we use the, that the facilities at Cass Marina and the Cruising Club be the, 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 the focus of uh, boating activities um, we wish uh, Cass Marina well, and we hope that many of you support Cass Marina and that effort and, and, and the people who have expressed interest in small boat facilities here, uh, that they participate in that effort and that would enhance the park. But again, you know, in past presentations, people have asked why we've left all that white and colored the rest. It's for a good reason, because we're not pretending to detail this. We took this off of a drawing that Cass Marina gave us of the latest that they knew of what they might be doing, but this, this may all change. And we also realize that shifting the cruising club position may, uh, may be impossible. It's just a recommendation, but the plan works either way. Well, the waterfront community uh, did not really, the, the, uh, the anchor out community did not come to the last meeting, maybe they're not here in particular, but they have in past meetings expressed a desire for all sorts of facilities that they feel they need. And, uh, and we feel that that is an issue that the city should, uh, should address, 
but Dunphy Park is not the appropriate venue, and, and, and expecting the Dunphy Park schematic master plan to solve those problems is just going to divert attention from really facing the larger problem, which has really nothing to do with Dunphy Park. Access to the park, um, there, um, there's the, uh, the, sh the shoreline path that I mentioned before. Uh, there are major entrances at Letho Street and, uh, and Napa Street. And then in big events, uh, people will flow across Bridgeway into the park, particularly with it being more open. Uh, also, the vehicular access into the parking lot is off of Napa Street, so we've avoided having any cars entering Bridgeway in, an, in any new place because it, you're going to have uh, increased bicycle traffic along here and then the, an increased vehicular traffic that we know, well, you, we certainly want to minimize the number of places where that all gets interrupted. Okay, this is, this is very important in the sense that the grading, uh, as I said, it's not going to be huge berms, but it's enough to give visual interest, to, uh, to give people a, a place to sit or lie, and also very importantly, uh, because the soil is so bad here, it will allow us to import soil and material and, and the berms will actually become a much better place for trees to grow and that's where we've concentrated trees to, to a large extent at the top of berms. It will also provide some degree of wind protection. The planting um, Grass, rolling grass with contoured berms, shade trees, and low water use plant, planting, improved condition of planting by progressively replacing with more appropriate species, improved maintenance. There were people who expressed a desire to keep as many of the existing trees as possible. We met with the maintenance staff. We met with horticulturists. There's a, a general consensus amongst people who are expert in this field that the trees are in bad shape. The soil conditions are, were not good for them. Uh, in fact, the day after the last uh, forum, I went down to the park and one of the myoporums had fallen over. The trees do fall. There was a branch that had fallen into the parking area. So we, we need to take a hard look at all the trees and eventually probably most of them will have to be replaced. This is an opportunity to do it right, to do the proper soil amenities, uh, to plant properly and to uh, and to have the proper drainage so that next time around we can be more successful but we certainly obviously very much in favor of trees uh, we'll try to have trees that are more umbrella type trees that you can see under so that you have a, a better view toward the water I'm not going to go into the details of the planting you can dig in there and, and get the recommendations that uh, Paul Leffingwell put together and the plant list. Um, habitat uh, restoration and preservation. Uh, again, we've talked about this a great deal. I, I, I just got a call from Barbara Salzman this afternoon wanting to be updated uh, on what was happening there. Um, there are, I think that there are quite a few entities that we can go to for help on this once that we have a plan, but we can't do anything until we have a plan. So these are the, some of the references that uh, uh, resources that that went into creating this plan and guides guidelines for the future. And oh, and I also want to forgot to mention in previous hearings that I did talk to the former police chief and several police officers. And they very much favor this greater transparency between Bridgeway and the uh, multi-use area. They feel that that will uh, uh, make it easier for them to, to make it a safe place and uh, to, to, uh, to control that area. They also very much like having the toilets and the active facilities and the parking in one area for, th for their control. I, I realize that's their limited point of view, but, but, but from that point of view, they are in favor of it.
Okay, thank you, Jacques, and to friends of Dunphy Park. How we, are we doing on the temperature in here? I've seen some of the... Okay, so let's do a little bit of opening here. We got, we got these big guys that are throwing off a lot of heat, but we'll give it a try. So, um, we're also going to give a try to this idea of grouping the comments together. See how that goes. Two caveats. Number one, this is a system, as Jacques indicated. It is interrelated. Um, and so if you are talking about parking and want to uh, reference proximity to bocce ball courts or whatever, we'll do that. It may work, it may not work, but we did have consistent topics come up. The other caveat is um, some of you have to leave. And uh, if you need to leave and you really want to be talking about bocce ball courts, come up. And we'll, we'll uh, accommodate uh, other comments as well because we do want to get you uh, uh, here and uh, out if you need to leave. So I'm going to dispense with the actual speaker cards for now. We're going to give it a go. Um, but I, when I call the topic, come up to the front if you would state your name slowly so Mia can get it, the notes will probably not have your name attributed to it, um, but we want to know who you are. And if you're affiliated with an organization, you can say that as well. So um, would all of those who are interested in talking about parking, or at least let's get three or four up here, and then I'll call some more so we don't have to have a long line. But that way we, we have an idea of how many uh, we're going to talk. Let me also just ask, how many of you do want to make comments tonight? Raise your hand. Okay. So that's about 15. I think we can do that within the time limit. So uh, Mike is going to be uh, doing the time clock there. And that will help everyone get uh, the opportunity. So name, organization, your comments. Jerry's going to be taking high level. Mia, more specific. OK, go ahead. I've got a schematic. I'll plug in. Yep. Help people to see it. Do we know how to? Do we not have a? Or do you have a thumb? thumb? Uh, I can put it on a thumb drive real quick. OK. Can you put it on a thumb drive and have someone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, step aside speak, and that way we'll, we'll get that going. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead. I'm Elizabeth Turplin. I've lived here a long time. I want to comment and thank the people who've done the plan. I think it's excellent. And I really want to talk about parking in the sense that this is visionary. The automobile has for too long been the center of all cities, but also Sausalito. We have a lot of parking lots on our waterfront. Here's a plan that's trying to reduce it. We all have to accommodate to that. And I think it's possible. And I just hope there's no change in the, this plan here and that no additional parking is added. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jim Wyckoff. I'm a resident here in Sausalito. And I'm representing the IDEST Hall, the Portuguese Hall, the Sausalito Portuguese Cultural Society, located down on 511 Caledonia Street. The Portuguese Halls for uh, decades, going back to the 1950s, has had events at our hall. And we've, off, we've always used portions of the parking lot down there, the dirt section, for our events. We hope that going forward that these, the parking lot will be available for reserve use as it has in the past for us. Events that we have, we have about four cultural events a year that involve the community. On weekends, primarily, we ran out the hall to public, for public use, weddings, family celebration events. We've also had many of the uh, city community events at our hall to help support activities in areas of concern, most recently with regards to the, uh, the possible changes to the ferry building. So parking's very important to us, so I hope you'd strongly consider the availability of parking to be able to be reserved for the IDEST Hall 
for our events. And also, I want to uh, congratulate you for passage of F, uh, the beautiful plan that you have here for Dumpy Park, and best wishes going forward. Thank you. So my name is Dr. Ben Brown, and I represent the 175 team members of the Botcha community uh, on 23 teams. We had a meeting on December 7th in which 13 team captains and members uh, put together a consensus document of our recommendations for improvements of the park. And subsequently, uh, Paul Rogers and myself met with Mike Langford and with Jacques uh, Ullman and Paul Leffingba, and we hammered out a uh, compromise agreement which, as best as we could tell, met the needs of both the friends of Dunkey Park, who had worked long and hard on this, and the needs of the Bacha community. Um, the Bacha players in this town provide about ten dollars to $12,000 of revenue a year due to uh, $100 team fees and uh, also individual fees. We play three seasons a year, but they only last about six weeks. And so even though one might be concerned about having 175 people parking at a lot, in fact, there are usually only 20 people or so at a given time, and they only appear 36 days a year because matches are only held two days a week, and they're only held for a six-week period. <laughs> Uh, there is a championship match at the end of each season, which sometimes has more people, but that's three days a year. So basically, we use the facility and pay the city, but we do so about 10% of the time, and we do so with a diminished group of people. Um, basically, at the end of our meetings, uh, we concluded that we needed <coughs> a larger facility because what happened with two courts and 175 members was we were playing at 9 o'clock at night with a flashlight on the Polino uh, because it was too dark. And we had to cancel a number of matches or have buys because there wasn't enough capacity. Initially, the group wanted four courts. We negotiated for three because it fit the scheme of the park better as designed by the Friends of Dunphy Park. Uh, we did want a waterfront location, which we have currently, but when the concerns of the Friends of Dunphy Park were presented about having an active use and a passive use area. We thought it was reasonable we could accommodate that. One of the benefits of living in a small community is that you can look for ways in which everybody can benefit from the outcome, and we've tried to do that. With respect to parking, <laughs> these issues were brought up at the prior meeting, and some of my colleagues reported to me on what happened. I can offer two things, one of which was the idea of one of my colleagues. Uh, the first idea is that I can communicate through all the Bocce Cocktons to remind all team members that they are not to park in spaces designated for Galilee Harbor. I have one more brief comment. And secondly, it was recommended by Debbie Blanchard, who's one of our team players, that we consider having a gate with card entry for Galilee Harbor parking so it's impossible for anybody who doesn't belong there to park in places that should be reserved for Galilee Harbor. That's not an expensive addition, but it's something that might help a lot. Um, I think that's all I have to say because I'm out of time. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret Badger, 14 Marin Avenue. First, I want to thank friends of Dunphy Park and particularly Jacques Ullman for the wonderful work they have done, and particularly the collaboration with the community uh, just testified to by the representative of Bochi. I think it's a remarkably good plan. And I would like to say that my particular bias is keep things simple and keep them small. Sausalito is a small community. One of the things I love about it, and many people love about it, is that it's walkable for lots of residents. I think a park is a place you walk to, if you possibly can. 
and I don't think we're trying to attract people from out of town to our parks. These parks are for us, and let's keep it simple. I am not in favor of having a park be a parking lot. I think we can manage this in our community with the 70 spaces that have been put up here in the plan. My other favorite thing about this plan, as it exists, is the way it comes right out to the sidewalk. It invites you in. I almost never go to Dunphy Park as it is now because of that parking area and because of those bushes. This is beautiful to have it opened up and invite people to walk in. So I am very thrilled with this plan as it has been presented here. And I hope that the parking will be kept as proposed in the plan. Thank you. My name is Mickey Allison, M-I-C-K-E-Y. <clears throat> and I live on Gate 6 Road in Issaquah Dock. Um, my son had his wedding, his husband and daughter-in-law had their wedding at Cruising Club. And they parked and pretty well filled up all the spaces that are currently there. Um, and it's, it's used for a lot of things. And I noticed on the plan, it has some ideas of leaving it for Gal uh, Galilee Harbor, which I think is fantastic. But it seems to me that during events, when you have uh, Cass Marina and the Cruising Club having events going simultaneously, that perhaps the parking should not be just open wide for the public, but reserved for those two events that use it. I mean, I'm assuming you have some sort of agreement. I'm not a member of them. I just go there frequently. Um, I spotted this plan from Cass Marina, I think it is, and I'm not in favor of a whole lot more parking. I think this is probably overkill, but I do think parking at opposite ends of the park for people to be able to use and walk a little longer Hey, that works. Um, basically, those big events that I'm talking though about are Easter and Fourth of July, when families get together and actually go to the cruising club, places like that. It becomes important because sometimes you just can't walk from some you know long distance. Thanks. My name is Muriel Allman. Um, I like this uh, design of the park. I've lived here over 40 years, and I, I rarely use Dumfrey Park because it doesn't feel right to me. And this design makes me feel good, and I think I will spend many an afternoon there with a book, maybe a thermos of coffee, or who knows what, really enjoy myself there. I like the open part between B and Litho Street, so you can just walk in and see the, the natural things, the grass, the water view and it's good for me to see the bocce and and those activities on the north end so that from bridgeway you can just look straight into the grass the trees the water it, it, it feels very inviting Hello, my name is Raylene Gorham. I'm on the board of Galilee. I'm speaking on behalf of the harbor. It's a 38 household community that obviously shares uh, property with Dumpy and our interests are um, <laughs> multivarious. Thank you, Pam, for putting this together, but uh, we might have some crossover with the systemic bit. Um, we were asked to put visuals together at the last meeting as we propose other alternative plans, and I have some I'd like to pass out to you guys. And do you have more comments as well, or is that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, to start with, we'd suggest keeping the bocce courts where they are. They work. Uh, you're up against a extreme budget constraints, and it doesn't make sense to us to move something that's working. 
and that further pushes all the activity to our doorstep. Um, the reserve Galilee parking uh, from our CUP, we're allowed 18 spots. This present parking plan um, reduces 127 spots to 50 and is increasing activity between the time that we build out our uh, future plans and Cass Skidley gets going and like as everybody has spoken to the multi various activities that happen in the park it's under a lot of pressure. Um, number three improve vehicular circulation along the railroads trip. Presently this plan reduces uh, there are at least two maybe three access and exit points and it's reducing it to a single exit that's on our property. <laughs> and you can just see that that is gonna create a lot of um, circulation problems. Number four, uh, we propose adding only 18 paid parking spaces to the existing railroad strip to B Street and extending uh, a grass area that's already structurally available towards the bocce court when needed. You can have that be grass paved, have it be a beautiful thing, have it be there when you need it. Um, let's see, number six, add a restroom towards Litho Street. As we take the larger view of the whole park, um, you're kind of looking at a, a larger parcel than originally, so we'd like to see it distributed across the area of the park keep cruising club as it is. I know that's not what we're talking about right now. There's a lot of issues with that. Um, and I'm sure somebody else will speak. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Chris Bond, I'm the uh, current staff commodore at the cruising club. Been a bocce player here in the league for uh, more than eight years now. Mike, were you able to get that uh, PDF up there? You may have to rotate it. Yeah, it's the top one there. There you go. You got to rotate it clockwise. I think. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to get through this quickly. So um, I was here at the last meeting, and uh, Mr. Burns, uh, who was uh, the uh, acting chairman at the time, solicited some comments and so um, an alternative design. So I, I basically took what uh, people had uh, commented on at the last meeting, and I put it in a visual form here, and I apologize for it not being super polished, but that's the way it is. So if you look at the um, uh, south side of the park, there's a city lot right there that butts right up against the, uh, you know, if you go through Lithos, you'd run right into it. That's a city lot. Why not turn that into parking to service the south end of the park, which is going to be greatly expanded. Uh, that whole point going out there is going to be uh, uh, part of Dunphy Park. So um, people, uh, come, you know, commented about uh, that kind of thing. So there's uh, putting parking there would relieve the pressure that's going to be on that north lot. Uh, I've also got uh, a another restroom uh, there right next to the parking lot because you don't want people running all the way back to the north side uh, if they're um, having fun out there at the south side. See, there's really two parts to this, three parts of this park. There's the north, there's the middle, and there's the south. Regarding the cruising club really quickly, we feel that uh, rotation is very, very difficult for a lot of reasons, but we can slide that thing north about 50 feet, which would open up a view, uh, and that would be pretty good. I've got the bocce courts there because anybody who plays bocce really wants them to be there. Moving them over to the north side is really a compromise. Uh, and then uh, if you look at the north side parking uh, at the easternmost part of that, uh, I put in a, a turnaround there because there's going to be service trucks coming in there, Cisco, by right, those are big trucks. They need to be able to turn around. I also shifted down the path so that it doesn't go alongside the cruising club. It comes down a little bit, leads right into the parking lot um, because of uh, putting the turnaround there. And then, um, let's see, uh, final comment here is the existing uh, rail railroad right away that the city acquired. Uh, Architect Michael Reck suggested that we could use some type of um, uh, paving material through which um, the underneath greenery could grow up. And uh, so if it, doesn't have, if it does have to be used for overflow parking, which uh, big events, uh, art festival and so forth, it's uh, needed, then uh, we could open that, that up and you still have parking and the rest of the time it would look nice and green. 
So um, I just want to put this out there so people have a different uh, set of things to bounce off of. Uh, we've been looking at uh, Jacques' plan, which is great. But uh, a lot of people think, hey, too much activity and parking at the north end. Let's balance it out, do some parking at the south end. Bocce people, if the bocce courts remain where they are, they would park in that, that south lot. Quick walk right there. Got a bathroom to take care of them. Spreads the load across the park. It's important to do that. Uh, and by the way, um, Commission, I did send you a copy of this plan earlier today with, with comments. So you've got that this PDF file in your uh, inbox. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, are there some others that specifically would like to talk parking or any of you back here? Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Heather Richard again, uh, representing Cass Marina. And I know I spoke last time um, specifically about the parking. I just want to reiterate or clarify that we uh, as an entity, as a nonprofit, are very interested in making sure that the park um, retains a beautiful ecosystem. We want to work with Jacques, especially once we have programs up and running. Um, to help with the preservation through programs that we run at Cass Marina and we'd really like to make sure that the habitat is Stays intact. We're not interested in seeing the park paved as a parking lot We would just like to make sure that there is a reserve amount of parking that sort of allows us to expand um, as we do run these programs and that we're not um, locking ourselves into a design that limits the amount of activity that could be happening at that end of the park all at once. We don't want to um, come to our, a place where we've had great relationships with the neighbors and then we find ourselves fighting over parking spaces. Um, and so it's not that we want to see the park paved, but we do want to see some sort of portion of the railroad right away or some sort of portion of the park still able to be used as overflow parking if we find ourselves in that situation. Um, and we're very willing as a nonprofit entity with part of our mission being to preserve ecosystems and promote environmental stewardship to take on some of the responsibility for the habitat restoration and making sure that the environment there is preserved in a beautiful way for the residents. A little graphic. My name is Nina LeBaron. I'm an architect, and I uh, hats off to all the work that Jacques has done on this. And um, I appreciate the processes in creating improvements to this important park. And apologize for coming in late on the design process here, but I'd like to submit a plan that brings up some of the problems from the last meeting that I attended. And um, in the lower left-hand part of my illustration, it shows the grass creek, which is a parking um, substrate that maintains the grassy look of the park. But if overflow parking occurs, or um, it's a way to have visually the park have that um, access from bridgeway and yet still maintain the parking. So I thought that was a uh, important. Um, aspect and also the turnaround at the cruising club I think is needed and the other part is having a um, a walkway if, the, if this grass creek in the uh, railroad right away happens having a walkway that loops around the whole park creating a loop around the park um, and then I moved the bathroom more in the central for the central location and if the bocce ball courts have to move which nobody wants them to move but if they have to move uh, moving them over to the um, other side of the park so basically um, that was it thank you thank you uh anyone else okay we have another person on parking or okay two more go ahead Hi, my name is Heather Wilcox, and I'm a resident of Galley Harbor, and my main concern besides the habitat, and I just want to say that you guys have really worked to make this beautiful in a lot of ways, but I do feel 
that having all of the bocce court and the cruising club and Casas Marina all in one area, and I'm going to specify this, it really puts a huge impact on, on our community. We have children and animals, a whole community living over there, and it really impacts all of us, and probably more on a daily, daily, um, and having even more concentration in that one area is really going to cause problems. Thank you. Thank you. I think we edged over into congestion a little bit on that one. No, no sorry at all. It happens. It is a system. Hmm? Okay. And Pam, excuse me. Is your, is your comment on parking? Yes. Pam, okay, great. If, Pam, if it's not working to do the this categories, we don't have to stick to it, too. It's, uh, I kind of thought that might be a way to do it, but it seems like we're going to be <laughs> all over the board. So We don't have to be firm on this. It's just a way of thinking. It's Thanks. a crossover, definitely. <laughs> I'm Peter Van Meter, and uh, those of us who have been around 40 years or more are observed the changes and <laughs> are about ready uh, to be done here that are really so essential. Uh, first of all, like many commentators, I'll say it's been a hugely productive effort that this committee, Jacques, and his team have done. Um, it shows the detail thinking and planning over the number of years, because sometimes on projects like this, you come up with ideas, but then is there thought about more, refined more and more? more public input and so on has happened over the last few years. It's clearly reflected in this plan. I think it's a beautiful plan, a wonderful plan, bring it forward to the street, et cetera, all those factors that have been mentioned. It's interesting uh, regarding parking. I looked at this presentation um, on the computer because uh, I missed the first meeting, and my first reaction is, well, gee, how come there's so much parking? Uh, and it's really the congested parking that exists behind the, p the park now between the park and the cruising club is very disorganized as we all know and the functionality of an organized parking lot solves that problem of cars getting locked in they can't get out you know somebody t parks behind you etc cetera, etc cetera, in the unorganized parking and uh, it's my understanding there's actually more spaces here in 70 spaces than exist in the current unorganized parking lot today so I think it's a great solution I don't see the need to add any more parking. After all, people do walk, as we've mentioned before. There's other parking, street side parking, and so on in the area. The big events, 4th of July, et cetera, you're not going to accommodate all the people anyway. You're never going to have enough parking for those kind of events. So if people expect they're going to be walking distances and parking elsewhere to get to those. So I congratulate the designers, the thoughtful process, the variety of uses that have been accommodated, as Jacques pointed out to balance those various interests and needs. Uh, it's just, a, in my opinion, a fabulous plan. I really don't see need for any modifications. I just, I just can't see any area where changes that I would recommend. I just think it's great to go ahead as it is. Thank you. Good evening. Adam Krivashi, 840 Olima Street. I came to comment on other things, but I heard comments on more parking, asking for more parking. So I would like to say that uh, we have lots of parking on Sausalito's waterfront. Jacques and his committee analyzed the need, came up with the number which 70 cars accommodates the, the anticipated requirements I would not put one more car space there uh, occupying more of the waterfront with asphalt or with whatever covers the parking lot. And I love the openness of the plan. I love the fact that uh, so much thought has been given to contouring the park. It looks like a natural place and a parking lot cannot look like that. So. Uh, I would like to put in my penny's worth that uh, no more parking than what's shown on the plan. Thank you very much. My name is Pamela Kane, and the last time I was in this room, I was with my father, Clarence, and we were actually told in the beginning uh, what kind of what color flowers we could plant around his house. So I 
brought that up because in the very beginning you spoke about the kind of trees and plants. Um, I'm kind of new on this getting in because I didn't hear very much about it till recently. And I'm just amazed at the amount of trees that are being taken down. I know there's trees that are being put in, but um, you know, when you have a good thing, I'll probably leave this meeting with a lot of enemies, but when you do have a good thing, why revamp it? I think it's a beautiful park. It's worked for a number of years. Of course, there's going to be things that we do need, restrooms and additional parking, but um, we have to look at the people that are living there now and that impact that park. And um, that's really all I have to say. I think, I think we just need to maybe look at not so much change. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we have one, two, and how many others on parking specifically? <laughs> Head on up. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Doug Storms. I live at Waldo Point Harbor. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the work and that every all the organizations, civic organizations, it always amazes me. Well, I'm always surprised at the participation. I think that's what makes Sausalito really great. We care and we're here. Um, second point is this is the first time that I've participated in uh, in this process right here specifically for the park and it wasn't really, well I have been to uh, the previous a year ago but it was other responsibilities took priority that I could not get away. And so um, f uh, my recommendation is have another meeting like this so that it really gives an opportunity for people that haven't had the opportunity to speak to speak. Um, there's no sense in rushing it. Uh, really, let's make sure we cross our T's, dot our I's and get the full public support and input. Um, some specific things that um, I think the beach uh, the accessible beach like what's at Schoonmacher is a phenomenal idea. To go along with that, uh, I would put out two swim platforms, one south, one north. Uh, it would be a great little platform for safety, for kids going out there. There's a visual barrier. Hey, John, don't go beyond those platforms. Um, and I think uh, if the seagulls don't, or the sea lions don't poop it up too much, uh, they would be really great. Um, the other thing is I think uh, cold water uh, showers outside like what they have in Southern California all along the coast they have one or two cold water showers outside so that you could rinse off after you go to the beach or people would be launching kayaks and they just need to get clean to, to, uh, to wash the, the sand off or the mud. Um, and that would be very low cost, um, very uh, low maintenance. Um, I'm not going to touch the hot button, but maybe other people will, and they've already mentioned it, about a coin-operated hot shower. Um, I don't think you're going to have people from S San Francisco coming over here all the way to take hot showers if it's a coin-operated hot shower. Um, that would be ideal, but the cold shower is, is, really, is really important. Um, and then to wrap it up, um, I was wondering what coordination that, uh, that you've worked with the owner of Bridgeway Marina because I know they have a lot of plans and they want to do a certain, you know, certain things and I'm wondering what coordination has gone on with them in terms of with parking that the Commodore of the Cruising Club mentioned about with the parking and what their plan is to push, the, uh, to push their marina out. Um, and then the last, uh, the parking, just real quick, um, I hope that the parking is from, the daily parking is from 5 a.m. to 12 p.m. I would hate to see it limited to 30 minutes or an hour because anybody who knows anything about being on the waterfront, you plan for an hour, but if you go out, you may be out there two, three hours. And so uh, that's important. Um, then the other thing I support Galley Harbor with spread the activities around. Uh, I think the bocce board on one side, if it's more cost effective, and just spread the, spread the activities around. Don't botch them up in one area, unless there's a need to, and I don't think there is. Thank you very much for, the, for your time. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, 
my name is Chris Kalina, Galilee Harbor. Um, I just wanted to speak specifically about uh, the parking situation and what I saw this weekend. Uh, we had a pretty big work weekend at the harbor. I was out in the yard both Saturday and Sunday. And Sunday um, was, you know, it's a winter Sunday. It's not a busy day in the park by any means. But we had uh, the, you s the kayak club was there kayaking. There was a meditation retreat, private event in the park, and the cruising club had its daily flow, a weekend flow. And by two o'clock, there were over 60 cars in the park, and uh, it wasn't even a big day. The way the park's set up, with the parking spread out, and especially the overflow parking on the strip, uh, and I'm I'm totally in agreement about making the park beautiful and not paving the whole park. Uh, no one wants to see it, but. What we have now, and with the way that the park, the parking happens on the strip, really works. You're able to have two or three big events going on in the park, and nobody's on top of each other. Everyone can park near where they their event is, and when you have big events, uh, you've got plenty of uh, uh, plenty of parking. Uh, the the meditation retreat this weekend on Sunday probably had 20 or 25 cars. They parked where all the. Um, maybe, I don't know if I can is that coming up? Um, anyway, they parked uh, right where the mouse is. and um, But say that had been a wedding and it attracted 100 cars, they still could have fit on that strip. And what we have in the park now is a, a situation that you can support uh, a small event or several big events, and it, it works. Uh, by Sunday afternoon with the 62 cars maybe that were I counted uh, you had people spread out all over the park the meditation retreat was more at the south end the kayakers were using the uh, space in front of Cass Marina to do the practicing before they went out and when they came in at 3 30 or 4 o'clock their load in was seamless there was plenty of room to spread the boats out to load them in the container uh, for people to uh, you know say their goodbyes and go on their way uh, all this time, uh, daily cruising club members coming in, maybe you have four or five cars uh, at a slow time, but uh, easily 30 or 40 cars uh, if there's a regular weekend event or if there's a private uh, weeknight event, like uh, there was a realtor's convention uh, last night. There are, have been you know, weddings held at the cruising club. There are AA meetings held at the cruising club. That parking in front of the cruising club, although it's been called Helter Skelter, the reality is that's probably one of the most used parking spaces on a daily basis in the park. And I know it's not, uh, um, people don't want to park by the water, but you know, you're know you in front of the cruising club there. There's no real view. It's not that pretty. Uh, having that stand of trees there to as a windbreak and to have the uh, cruising club maybe even hidden a little bit from the view from the hill is probably not a bad thing. And to be able to have that access for people that are come into the park to be able to park near where they're going it's I, I think it it just really works thank um, you very much for your comments okay thank you okay um, we have another speaker absolutely Douglas Martin I'm part of the uh, friends of Dumphy Park so it's no surprise I think that this is a good plan that uh, reaches a good compromise among the various users of the park. Um, personally, I use it to uh, have a place in town <coughs> that I get to by bicycle or on foot, just to have a place where I can look unimpeded for a mile or two. Uh, the eye otherwise, when you're, there aren't a lot of places except if you live on the water yourself or in the north uh, uh, after you get past the, uh, uh, the, the commercial areas where people can simply look and have a sense of, of, uh, of, uh, of space and of uh, the, the, uh, the world around you without the eye being interrupted by some object. <laughs> so I'm of that constituency that may not come here in the same numbers that simply uses the park to walk around 
and to look and to enjoy the uh, environment of a place which is open and green and where you can get at the water, you can actually touch the water. It's not just, it's not full of boats and, and, uh, or objects of one sort and another. And uh, I think that it, that, uh, the, um, that the Jacques and uh, Paul, as they work through this and as I've watched them create this plan from the comments that they've got, have reached uh, a fair compromise among the competing uh, users of this space. And I think particularly uh, what I look forward to is the uh, natural uh, uh, area that is going to be to the south, which uh, will be a, an area where that we're going to develop, or we hope to develop, uh, a nature preserve of a, of a small area uh, where that lagoon can be uh, made into a place where birds and, and uh, and aquatic animals can uh, can come and be observed, and uh, and so that's why I, this this is on parking. But it's because the parking seems to be the thing that can interfere with at least what my constituency wants here. I thought I better get up and talk about uh, what I'd like to see and preserve. Okay, other speakers? Yeah, I got two. Okay. One, one, quick one. one, two, three. On the other Four. side of Galilee, on the path of Schoonmaker, there is plenty of parking where people would just take that little short walk. And had and had being a member of the cruising club, you never parked at that lot. Because if you got a nice car, you could lose it at that lot. The city never maintained it. There's potholes. So we always park way over um, by Schoonmaker. It's a city, it's public access parking. So this has got really more than adequate parking. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sandra Cannon, and I thought of something about two speakers back, which is I was uh, at an event at the cruising club about two days ago with a 90-year-old, and uh, club will actually rotate to that position or not but that's really far for someone who can't walk and that's all I've got really at it is that even if the cruising club is stays where it stays I don't want to use the word handicap but what about people who can't walk that far the distance from that parking lot to where the cruising club door is now is actually far too far for some people to walk in reality. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Margaret Mincher Schulferman, and I um, just briefly, I'd like to thank the friends of Dunphy Park. Um, I think it's a beautiful plan, and um, I especially, I do think it's visionary not to have parking on, on Bridgeway and to be able to look across that expanse. I think it would be a gem and something that we'd be very proud of in the future. And um, you know, we we have such a car culture. Um, maybe that you know we can start working on that. I do think we have to work with the Galilee Harbor and um, work something out with that community because they're an important part of our town. But I love this plan, and I think. Mr. Allman and the other people that worked on it did a fabulous job. Thank you. Hi, my name is Will Flanders. Um, I don't represent anybody except for the informal stroller brigade that you might call us. I'm a stay-at-home dad. I've got two little ones. 
Uh, we used to live in Hurricane Gulch and Bridgeway. The sidewalk was my first learning center for the scooters and the skateboards and the bicycles. I think one of the greatest things that I see here, um, I also studied landscape architecture, and um, I do want to say uh, congratulations to this committee, the Friends of Dunphy Park, have put together a great scheme. Uh, the first thing that I see is, uh, is that, uh, the first thing I know about this area is that it's flat. And having a place and knowing that soon we're going to have an enormous amount of young teenagers and we're going to have an area for them to explore using all kinds of different vehicles. And I think that what I see here, what's missing right now is an openness from the Bridgeway sidewalk and seeing that open and promoting people to move around the park, I would certainly just put forth that that sidewalk doesn't have to be the normal 36 inches wide. It can be a much wider sidewalk. I come from Seattle. There's uh, Green Lake uh, Park uh, up there, which is used by rollerblades, skateboards, walkers, and all kinds. So I would promote, promote that even more and just put forth that in terms of design issues of how big the parking ends up, where the bocce courts end up, is all about compromise. It's nice to hear that word being used already because it is about compromise and in the end nobody is going to be happy with the final thing but they're going to be able to say well I would have loved them here but now they're here and we're all going to get along. I just put forth that the greatest thing to do is to open it up to Bridgeway and I would put my two cents of not extending the parking. I don't think, I think if this park and ever, all of its needs can't be done with 70 parking spaces you're really overreaching to accommodate the cars. But what we've done here is at least put down something that I would point out as being the most important thing is to open up that park from Bridgeway and to breathe it from Bridgeway, uh, which is already turning into quite a trafficked road and saying that there's something else that can be done. Um, but again, it's just congratulations for putting something down. It's a great time to have kids and to show them, you know, this is where it started and hopefully we'll get them there and to use the park much more than it's being used now. Thank you. I'm Super Holland. I live at 300 Napa Street. I'm speaking for myself as a bocce ball player. I participate in leagues both here in Sausalito and in San Rafael. I have one quick word about parking. Please, please, please have more parking there. I wonder how many of you would feel if you came home and someone was parked in your driveway. And I face that more than once. Uh, you know, a week, you know, with that stuff because it's overflow from parking uh, from the park or people not understanding that Galilee parking lot is not part of the park parking. But going on with what I've given you, um, this is essentially Galilee Harbor's proposed plan, but with me having super, superimposed six bocce ball courts on there. Uh, right now, I'm suggesting that you only have four which is an increase. I went down and measured before I came up tonight. If we had three as its um, uh, bocce ball courts, this is all on the south end, as their space now, that would take about 46 feet. The way I have four of them here, by having one pair with a foot apart between those two, that would have room for a stanchion, a light stanchion between them, and then viewing space on either side of that, and then have a second pair with the same configuration is only going to take about 50 or 51 feet. So it's a five foot difference and you get four quarts, which in fact doubles what we have now. Um, we don't have enough bocce ball courts. We don't allow enough teams to register and participate in the leagues because we don't have enough space for people to play. If any of you have tried to go across the Richardson Bay Bridge in the afternoon, you know how backed that up it is because it's just a bottleneck. Well, the bocce ball courts are a bottleneck also. 
and I want you to consider putting four in now, but when you're planning this master plan, allow for expansion to six. It's also an opportunity for the, count, uh, for the city to be making more money off of those uh, courts in addition, you know, as a uh, rental to private uh, groups. And one thing I love about bocce, everybody can play. I don't care if you're three, I don't care if you're 83. And we have that range up in San Rafael of people playing when you have little kids who are learning from the, their parents as well as grandmothers and great grandmothers up there, you know, playing with stuff. Um, I think keeping in, uh, the bocce ball courts on the south side of the park, why not? It's going to save you money instead of having to relocate the, the whole situation. And a, a lot of this is going to come down to the money in the end about how much we have. We know we have to stay within a budget. So let's get the best bang for our you know, uh, buck with that completely. By having four bocce ball courts, you also open up the possibility of um, a team playing more than one game in one evening. I was totally aghast when I came to Sausalito Bocce Ball League to find out if you're on a team, you, you know, you only play one game. Up in San Rafael, I play three games when I play in an evening against the same team. And uh, you get one game in and you're just rolling and then it's somebody else's turn. So I'd like you to think about uh, expanding it, you know, in two ways and four Bocce Ball courts and five more feet of space width-wise is, I think, a great bang for your buck as far as uh, use with things. Thank you very much. I think we had a misfire on the timer. So if you could wrap up. Oh, and okay, I will. Yeah, and you can also write any comments in, uh, to Mike, email I, or writing. I've already emailed Mike, okay. you know, with this. The other thing is uh, I encourage you to make one of those bocce ball courts by the multi-use path accessible. Right now, what you call accessibility is someone rolling up and watching. But I mean about somebody being able to actually have, you know, the boards lifted off on one side on each end where they can actually participate and play. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. My name is Shelby Van Meter. I'm speaking this evening as an individual, not for the organization I am particularly associated with. Um, I would like to say that I love this plan and you know Dunphy Park is really Sausalito's park. It's the community's park and it really is the only one that I think is used broadly by everyone in this community. So it truly is the one that has to accommodate many, many concerns and interests. Uh, we have another waterfront park, Gabrielson, but a lot of tourists spend their time there and not very many local people. So I think that Jacques and Paul have been amazing in their ability to try to accommodate the needs and the interests of so many groups and so many people. Um, there have been, there's been quite a wonderful process, a public process with many people participating. It seems to me from what I've heard tonight that parking is the big one. Parking is the big one everywhere in town and if you've been on Caledonia Street lately you know that Caledonia Street is a huge parking issue today. It wasn't a while ago. So everything is changing relative to parking. And I think the word compromise is the key word here. And for all of us to have done this as a community with everyone's input and the compromises that needed to be made so that there could be something for not everyone, but maybe for almost everyone in the community if they wish to use this park. So I can't say enough about how much I appreciate this park. I have many friends at Galilee Harbor and I respect and am concerned for their concerns. Uh, somehow I can't imagine there being more parking, let alone parking on the south end. Uh, it is a park, not a parking lot, and this space, this open space, is such a gift. It's such a gift. Dunphy as it is today isn't used by very many people for a number of reasons. I can see that this is going to bring the community back to Dunphy Park. Thank you all for your attention and for the hard work that's got into creating this beautiful plan. I'd like to just do a time check and make sure that uh, we have enough time for your comments on congestion and specific to bocce ball. And then we have some time for 
questions at the end and also to see if the commission has any comments or questions. So parking or other? Okay. And sir? Parking and other. Okay. And how many other people would like to speak on other topics? One, two. Okay. Let's go ahead. I'm anchored out as well as a member of the cruising club. Um, personally, I like the parking lot in front of the cruising club that makes it really easy to access for the for the bands. For I'm also washing dishes there, so, so I help unload food and bring the food into the club. It makes it real easy to just have the parking lot right on the front doorstep. Um, with that fire road, possibly like maybe. I, I could see cutting out half of it, making half of that parking, and then half of it gra grass up to the sidewalk. That would be pretty cool. And uh, also, like uh, for most of the anchor outs, the park there, I hear you guys will be shutting it down from like J June or July 5th to the next year um, on the 4th. Well, that's like the main source of water for most of the anchor outs out there, like getting water and. On top of that, like Galilee is where a lot of the anchor outs dock, and uh, that's like the main spot, like where we live life, other than on our boats. Um, so it would be really, I'd really appreciate it. At least some of the park was open for the anchor outs during the construction, to where uh, we're not completely closed off from any of that park, because we need somewhere to be. On, on shore and to get our water and be part of the community um, and yeah thank you thank you hello uh, Dunphy Park Commission and citizens of Sausalito uh, the plan is to close the park from July 5th to the next year and July 4th not only is it the only source of water for a hundred people that's double the number that's at Galilee it also is the only porta potties and the only legal trash dump so I think there is not a possibility for me to accept that all public access will be closed anywhere in Sausalito with Dunphy Park being closed right now there's uh, there's people that use the park that are from the Anchorage and maybe not in the best way. Maybe there's a, there's a bunch of reasons for that and maybe why a lot of people don't feel comfortable. But I think if the plan is to close the park for a year and this being the only public access now on land for the Anchorage for a hundred people, uh, that would be a terrible, terrible mistake. Thank you. Thank you. We had one back here, almost in the back, and one here. Okay, so we've got three right now. If you'd come on up. Uh, we are still parking, but I think given the time, we're edging into your other. Okay. Anyone else parking? Okay. So we've got other. Do we have specific to bocce? Because I think you should get up now. <laughs> okay. So this is a follow-up to uh, some of the prior comments. If you could remind us of your name. Yeah, my Mia name is Dr. Speaking. Ben Brown, and uh, I helped organize the Bocce Captains for a meeting in which we came to a consensus of recommendations. And the reason we did so was that we have had some real problems for which the current facility is not adequate. Two courts are not enough to support the volume of players and matches that we have, so we needed more courts. Secondly, the current parking facility is totally inadequate. Uh, some of us won't park in that dirt road with all the potholes and dust and dirt and bird droppings there and wind up parking in, on the street and paying parking meters. Uh, because the current parking facility next to Galilee also was 
relatively inaccessible and there were very few places that were really reserved for our players. Um, so two of the motivations were we needed more courts and we needed better parking than we have currently in the current configuration. I think on the whole, having considered this plan and the other two configurations suggested tonight, all three of them I think are great. I think they're well thought out. Uh, however, what we agreed to previously at both the meeting of the Vulture Captains and at the subsequent meeting with Parks and Rec and with the current architects was this plan. And I think part of the reason was a compromise from our standpoint. Uh, we accepted less courts, three rather than the four which people wanted and we accepted moving the uh, site of the current courts uh, because it met the needs of the friends of Dunphy Park who worked very hard and long on this and creates a nice nature preserve. I think that's all I really have to say here, but the current setting is not adequate for the needs of the, the Bacha League, and I'm glad to see that all of the uh, plans at least increase the number of courts and uh, have some benefits in terms of parking over what we have currently. Thank you. So we're going to go one, and then, sir, you're going to be afterwards if you're ready. Okay. Hi, Chris Kalina again. Uh, I'm also a bocce player, and one thing that, uh, just to respond to Ben, uh, we've got now three courts, which is going to attract more cars, and there is less parking available near the bocce courts in this new configuration. Currently, uh, there's plenty of room to put a third court where the right next to where the two bocce courts are. And if the railroad strip was kept as some type of a green parking, like was mentioned earlier, there are plenty of spaces to park. Currently, at a small bocce game, there might be 15 or 20 cars. Uh, bigger Saturday games could generate up to 40, and that's only with two courts. Um, ben mentioned that he's even parking on the street, so when I go to bocce games and count cars, I'm not even counting the people that are parking outside of the park. Uh, with three courts, I could easily see 40 to 60 cars uh, coming in, and in this current plan, that's going to fill up the parking lot, or nearly fill up the parking lot. That doesn't take into consideration the cruising club, which on an average night can have 20 or 40 cars on a big night. That fills up the current 65 spaces that are available. And while I've heard a lot of people that really comment on how wonderful this plan is, I question if they actually currently use the park now and see how the many uses that, that go on there. This isn't just a, a you know, a, a few different uses. I mean, the cruising club is a big draw, bocce is a big draw, private events are a big draw, and we have a plan, we have a current parking situation that allows all those things to exist next to each other without uh, crowding each other and um, I think in this plan with crowding everything to the north end and limiting the spaces we're very quickly going to reach capacity of parking on a weekly basis. Galilee of course is going to be the first one that's affected because currently a handful of times a year we see this. Uh, people will park in front of our office first and then they'll start to fill up in our lot. Uh, or we have to tell people to move. Uh, we've never towed a car, but uh, I, and I don't want to have to start doing that. Um, a gate was mentioned and a card key and stuff, and I, I don't think that's necessary either. I think it, this is time to really look at the all the uses that are going on in the park and create a parking plan that it doesn't turn the park into a parking lot. The idea of having a green paved or you know a grassy parking area for overflow and for big events. It makes sense. It's what we have now. It's what gets used uh, numerous times a year. Uh, it separates cars out so that, you know, if you have a bocce game going on and 40 cars have filled up the space near the bocce courts and the band has to come loan in the cruising club, I mean, are they parking in the street to do this? And uh, I don't want to sound uh, cynical, but I'm pretty familiar with what goes on in the park and I'm pretty passionate about making a nice park. But thanks we thanks need very to, much, we and need to, we need to move we on. We need to do a, a compromise plan that really considers all the uses of the park, not just the future envisioned uses that the friends have laid out, which they're, okay. they're honorable, Thank too. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. 
And I'm going to ask the others if you would be particularly concise. I think each of you have spoken before. That way we'll have a little bit of time for questions, wrap up, and we'll be able to get out of here at 830. Okay? Thanks. Um, good evening. My name is Patrick Seidler. My uh, uh, Aunt B. Seidler had lived in Sausalito for over 50 years, and she passed away a couple of years ago. I grew up in Larkspur and spent a lot of time down in Sausalito, including Dunphy Park and all your activities and jazz in the Bay. And I've had a great time seeing Sausalito through all those years. And um, I want to really thank Jacques and you and everybody who's participating in the process. And you have a real tremendous project on your hands here. And tonight I'm speaking from, with, to you from an organization called Transportation Alternatives for Marin. We're a 501c3 nonprofit that promotes sustainable mobility. Uh, including and most particularly pedestrian and bicycle transportation. And what I wanted to do was um, let you know, that, and we're also located in Mill Valley. Uh, and I, I handed you a packet, and I'm sorry I don't have one for you guys, but we can maybe put something online for it. But there's a packet, and in your packet, uh, which is not there, is the 1973 county bike plan that describes the, plan, the pathway that Jacques uh, talked about which is the north-south greenway is what it's referred to. And it's referred to that in most all of the plans in Marin County and in the region is the north-south greenway. And started in 1973. The first document you have uh, in your packet is the north-south bikeway study from 1994, which also describes the pathway that uh, Jacques referred to. And there's just some historical perspective for that for you to look at. The next document, document number two, is the Saucedo Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan from 2008. You'll see behind that there's a map that shows that also the North-South Greenway is in this section the entire length of the way. And I uh, urge you just to take a look at that and consider that in your, in your uh, uh, process. After that, you'll see the County Pedestrian Master Bicycle Plan from 2008 that also refers to the North-South Greenway and in particular the area in Sausalito. Just letting you know it's a, it's a very important project uh, for the entire area and, and for Sausalito. It's a, it's a great, a great uh, amenity for Sausalito. And then last is the one that you referred to, which is the, uh, or which Doc referred to, which is the City of Sausalito Ferry Terminal Gate Six Road Path Feasibility Study, which is the North-South Greenway from Gate Six to the Ferry Terminal, and that is the cross section that Jacques showed you. I urge you to really take a close look at that. What I would suggest is you actually incorporate that into your plans and ideas, or at least spacing designs. It's another source for potential funding to fund that area. But it's the people who said that have been down here is or have been speaking is that this is a great place to come to. It's a great park, it's a great facility. And uh, what I urge you to consider is it is a legacy project. And as your great-grandchildren are looking back on this, the question is, what were you building? Were you building a parking lot as the seas were rising? Or were you building a place that you could walk and bike to and enjoy the out space and, open, and uh, the outdoors? And so really take, I urge you to take a look at that, take a look at the plans that are on the books, there is, you've got it hopefully in your spacing. It doesn't quite look like it there, but I encourage you to incorporate the designs in your spacing, and most particularly mode separation, which is in the, the 2011 plan. Get the bicyclists away from the pedestrians, which is in that plan, because that's where accidents happen. And if traffic picks up, it'll be even more. And I'd like to follow the other speaker who said, widen that pathway a little bit, the, the, the pedestrian side of it. It's only five feet. You know, open it up a little bit because I really think that it's going to make the amenity of the park a lot better. If you and could beep. wrap up, Mike's been very generous with putting 24 minutes on the timer, <laughs> but Jerry has a separate timer and it says time's up. Yep. Well, the thank only you. thing I want to do is thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Adam. Kriva again, 840 Ulima Street. I am a former member of the Sausalito Transportation Committee. We prepared a transportation plan, including non-motorized transportation routes through South Salito. The plan is unofficial. It's part of the uh, city council's uh, and task force's material that they will refer to when they update the, uh, South Salito's circulation element, the, the uh, general plan circulation element uh, update process will be uh, including that. I'd like to emphasize that we are talking only about six feet of right of way for a north-south connection for families, children, not on the roadway but on the uh, west side of the park 
and it, that can be easily shown on the plan, plus a turning radius where the parking lot ends in front of uh, Michael Rex's office. Uh, that last parking space may have to be eliminated or pulled back in order to uh, allow for a turning movement for, for that multi-purpose pathway. I would like to give you a copy of excerpts uh, that show dimensions and leave it with you and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mike definitely doesn't want to go home because he's still got that 24 minutes up there. Uh, uh, but I've again, got a timer here so we're... Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Peter Van Meter again. I am a bocce player uh, once a year. Uh, rotary uh, fundraising event up in San Rafael, and that proves anybody can play bocce. Uh, and they have, my, my, by my recollection, at least 10 courts there, maybe more people that play would know. Uh, and if they have a parking lot, I've never found it. Uh, and it doesn't seem to prevent people from playing there. And so I don't think the bocce players, if they have to walk a few blocks from neighborhood parking, are gonna have any problem. I know that my once a year exposure to bocce in San Rafael I have no problem not finding a parking lot. Okay, and I think um, so that we can end on time, we'll have these two. Um, that will be the final oral comment, and everyone is welcome to submit written comment. So, uh, Mickey Allison again. This is a quickie. Uh, the cruising club, I notice, has been rotated. And right now, um, it was easy to get two wheelchairs to a wedding at the cruising club. I look at that and I kind of wonder, is there gonna be a railing on the side of that long pier going out? Because that could be a serious danger thing, especially I'm getting older. I might have a torn cruciate ligament, actually two in one knee. With a knee injury, I don't know if I can get out there. So that scares me a little bit, that length of distance. Um, so I don't know if the cruising club said, hey, we're great with that or not, or if they're gonna make modifications for handicap. Hi, Raylene Gorham again uh, with Galilee Harbor. I guess I didn't use up my whole three minutes because I gave you guys handouts, but I'll keep it very brief. I just wanted to speak to um, the issue of the bike path and that has come up and that is a concern of ours. Our community is a part of that vision of connecting um, the bike path with the, all of the rest of the area. And we have we have also separated, we have a waterfront pedestrian path and a bike path, which I mean, we're not even shown on this plan, but. Thank you. Um, this concludes the formal public comment uh, part of this meeting. There, were, there was a question um, and some parking lot issues. Parking lot means good topics, not s so specific to the schematic master plan. So Jerry, the question was, Yeah, I go ahead. We bring it up to close. If I think it was uh, an a re request for additional what efforts have been made to do outreach with the community. Yeah, you let we'll let Mike uh, this on process. Mm -hmm. So we've had okay, we've Mr. had Storm. Okay, we've so had we've had multiple. Uh, Okay, let's We've had multiple talk. outreach here. Um, we had the meeting in uh, 2013 that was uh, broadly advertised and attended by somewhere between 70 and 100 people, if I remember correct, Jacques. Uh, basically, it was a full house at the Bay Model in their meeting room there. 
Uh, it's been before the Parks and Recreation a, f a few times, the fully agendized meetings. It's also been to the City Council uh, at least three or four times, and we can uh, count those up if you like. At the last City Council meeting, when the Friends brought the uh, plan forward, public participation was a question about uh, how much effort has gone into that. We talked to them, and it was decided to have two more meetings, the one last week and the one this week. Uh, I saw somebody had a postcard there. Postcards were sent out to every address and every P.O. box. So every 94966, every 94965 uh, address within Sausalito. And that also includes the unincorporated areas of Sausalito. In addition, uh, there was the website that was mentioned. I didn't get a chance to look and see how many hits it had uh, today. At our last meeting, it had about 75 hits. Two days ago, it had 350. I would not be surprised if that number is up to around 500 hits right now. And all the information that has been presented has been up on that website. Okay. Uh, let me uh, turn this to the commissioners to see if you have any questions or comments before we close at uh, 5 o'clock. <laughs> Where am I, what am I thinking? I had some place to be at 6. No. 8.30. Thank you. Uh, Cindy, do you have any? Uh, I don't have any questions. Uh, for the Please make sure to use your microphone there, the green light. Thank you. In a, I mean, a lot has been covered in the past two, two uh, sessions, which has been really helpful. But one thing I would like to do um, as commissioners, I think, is I have a suggestion to get it on our schedule that we walk this property with Jacques and any other sort of very informed person so they can help us sort of visualize this and consider all these suggestions that have been made to fully consider them and to get their input on what might what may work what may not work and why so okay we'll take that did you have anything else? Well, I would like to say that, um, you know, I asked you guys, you as, the, as the, the, the people in the public to come and speak, I asked you to do something and you did it, and you did it awesome. I, I loved having uh, Chris Bond, I think he's gone, Chris, the other groups that brought plans and brought ideas. Um, you know, we, we originally saw a lot of concerns, but we didn't have as many collaborative ideas, and they came, and that's exactly what I think this process was so keen about and how many people were able to participate um, with, with the microphone as well as with their emails, which we have recorded in all these notes. It gives us a ton of information. Um, thank you. Thank you for participating in that way, way and answering that charge. Um, You've heard the process. We're going to get together both as a commission as well as a task force. Um, we can implement Cindy's. We got to talk about that with with uh, agending and agendizing and so forth. But um, we do want to present something to council with recommendations on what we've heard. We might need to vet those further. We might need to contact some people individually uh, as a task force or as one-offs. But um, you spoke and it's and you did it in a great fashion. And, and it's our our responsibility to it to at least answer those or at least it, it acknowledge those um, so thank you for that uh, I think that's really about all I had I you know I didn't want to get this into a lot of discussion at this point because of the time we want to make it as much about you speaking tonight as possible but uh, this this does open the door for future more for a few more offline discussions and then we present those recommendations to council you'll still have more time to chime you'll still get more time to chime on some of these items uh, you know, some, maybe some tinkering in, in parkings and things like that, and, and as we've talked about, some of those other fine details. But to this point, thank you all very much for that, uh, for that input. Mike, do you have anything to close? Well, uh, Commissioner Burns, you mentioned pre presenting to the City Council. It's, uh, we hope that uh, we can all work together and present to the City Council at their t February 23rd meeting. Uh, that means we, the Parks and Rec Commission would need to have a meeting prior to that to make some su suggestions and make the recommendation to the council. Uh, I'm suggesting that we meet on Monday, February 8th 
at 7 o'clock. We'll put that down as a tentative because I do need to check room space and availability, but uh, we'll, we'll make it work one way or another if that is okay Sounds with good. you. Sounds good. Sounds good to us. Well, we'll have to have time to have our um, you know, further exploration of the actual physical property before we have Well, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that as a commission, as an agendized commission, and find a, a meeting time to do that, but we definitely can do that individually. We can talk about that with, as, as opposed to talking about it as a Well, I group. think I think my point was that I, I would like to have Jacques there at least mm -hmm. to much time on this to explain you know some of these very good suggestions I think why why is it this way instead of that could it be adjusted as some of these suggestions have come I would suggest that you do that as individuals with Jock so as not to violate the Brown Act and then uh, when you come back then you can report on your findings okay I think there's one more <coughs> comment back here but we will stop at 8 30 If you could please approach the microphone. Thanks very much. Thank you all and um, appreciate like, the comments. If I could make one announcement here, um, we are going to be having a groundbreaking on February 9th for Robin Sweeney Park. It will be sometime in the afternoon. This is late breaking news, so uh, look for it. We hope to see you there as well. Thank you very also, much. Also, you heard our date. If you have anything that you need to get to us, I know some of you have been able to reach us so you can do it. Uh, get us any valuable information prior to our our meeting thank you meeting adjourned